For me, there is something so relaxing and peaceful about waking up early on a Sunday morning and writing some code. You have the whole day ahead of you, and I know that any progress I make during this time is going to set me up really well for the rest of the week ahead. Today, like many days, I'll be working on my SaaS web application called Dinnerby. And if you're new around here, Dinnerby is a platform mainly for couples to coordinate and plan their meals throughout the week. I'll be releasing the platform early in 2025, but I am currently in phase one of a three phase beta. Before I go into the phases of the beta and what exactly I'll be working on this morning, let's go make some coffee. I've been trying to improve my barista skills, but unfortunately I still have a long way to go. Today I'm making a cappuccino. The taste is very good, but the presentation leaves quite a bit to be desired. So if any baristas out there, definitely let me know what I'm doing wrong. The weather is finally starting to cool off after another brutal Texas summer, so I like to spend some time outside in the morning while the air is still crisp and the streets are still quiet. I also find that I do significantly better work when I've had something to eat. So today I'll go with a simple avocado toast, top with a runny egg, and some chili crisp. If you know, you know. But now let the fun begin. And let me start by explaining the beta phase that I'm currently in. So for phase one, I decided to let three of my close friends, who also happen to be software engineers, into the platform. I wanted their opinions as fellow devs and also wanted to make sure that there were no glaring system issues, nothing crazy with the platform, no security issues, you know, nothing like that. These are folks that I really respect and trust and they were able to provide me with some really valuable feedback before opening up the beta to a wider pool of audience. That wider pool is about 30 folks from my YouTube community and you know, I wanted to make sure that the, the platform was in as good a state as possible before getting those folks into it. So for specifics, the bugs slash improvements that I am tackling this morning are as follows. First, implementing some sort of UI indication that a recipe failed to save. So if you know there's an error in that creation process, I want to be able to alert the user that that has happened. Second, want to fix a bug that uh, caused ingredients to be added over and over again when editing a recipe. Third is creating a welcome email that sends to customers when they have successfully purchased and activated their account. And fourth are just some small bug fixes like making sure the list of calendars are aligned in a nice column and some overflow issues we were seeing on the account creation screen when on a mobile device. These are enough items for a great coding session and I love getting this kind of actionable feedback. No matter how big or small, I know that they will all have a positive impact on the platform in the end. When working by myself, it can be really easy to overlook things like this so being able to bring in folks who can see your blind spots is a really powerful tool that truly cannot be understated. Learning from your peers and learning in general is such a core reason for why I love building software. And that spirit of continuous learning and improvement is why I decided to partner with today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing. With thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. And Brilliant really is the most effective way to learn, as each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts. This is a method that has proven to be six times more effective than just watching lecture videos. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. Personally, what I've found most impactful are their programming courses that develop your mind to think like a programmer. There are beginner-friendly and advanced courses from general programming all the way to how LLMs work under the hood with real-world applications and case studies that explain how to apply your new knowledge. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org geno or scan the QR code on screen or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you again to Brilliant for sponsoring the video. And in the time of that short advertisement, I've now got all the fixes for all the bugs and improvements that I talked about before. So let's hop into my computer to see the outcome of all of those. So first I'll show off those bugs real quick that have been taken care of now. 
So the first here is a screenshot of how it initially was. These calendar icons are not aligned very nicely, but now we have cleaned that up and they are aligned nicely, uh, aligned left. And the second issue was this overflow that was happening on smaller screens if you were creating your account and you had the error text uh, appearing. And so that has been taken care of as well. Next off, we have that welcome email that I was talking about before. And so now whenever a user signs up to the platform, uh, I do believe that a Stripe confirmation email will be sent as well in production environments, but I wanted to make sure that something was coming from the platform itself as well. So now we just have a nice link over to get started. This goes straight to the homepage and just has a nice message that says, congratulations, you have successfully activated your Dinnerbeer account. This next issue was the one that I was talking about for um, ingredients essentially being added over and over again if you were trying to edit your recipe. And this was a problem on the back end. Um, essentially, I was trying to delete the ingredients for a given recipe when someone edited it and then re-add them. Uh, and I just wasn't deleting the old ingredients. So um, as you can see here, that is what is happening um, for this user. And it was awesome feedback. I was able to look at this and kind of figure out exactly what was going on just from looking at this one video. So this type of feedback is, is incredibly helpful. The final bug fix for this session just comes on the create recipe page. And essentially there was no indication to a user if something went wrong in recipe creation. And so for example, if I try to type this huge long number and I could have some validations here on the front end too, but I'm not super worried about that. Um, you know, this would violate something in my, my database constraints. And that is why an error would be thrown. So again, before there was no indication to a user that something went wrong, but now if we try and create this recipe, we see we need to get a nice snack bar that indicates that, hey, there was an error creating your recipe and you probably have to do something different if you want it to actually succeed. So that's gonna wrap it up for this nice, easy Sunday morning of coding and fixing some bugs inside of Dinnerbee. I'm really excited to share with you the feedback that I've been getting in this now phase two. Um, so now a few days into phase two, and I'll be sharing all the feedback and fixes that uh, I'm currently doing inside of that phase. So again, thank you to everybody who is currently participating in the Dinner B beta. Uh, I know that this video is a little bit different than what I normally do. So if you enjoyed it, let me know. If you didn't enjoy it, also let me know. Uh, it's definitely open to feedback and suggestions, but just wanted to take you inside a normal day working on some software, and I hope you enjoyed it. That'll do it though. I hope you have a great rest of the day, and thank you so much for watching. Take care, y'all.